TBS 8 follow-up. We hear from a ranch owner accused of neglecting horses on her property. A local high school basketball star arrested. The charges he faces coming up. We verify our electric vehicles driving up SDG&E rates. Ben Midler here is living history. We'll have more on my conversation with a Holocaust survivor tonight. And the 50-50 club is a rare honor. 50 years as a theater artist, 50 years as an educator. We profile Patricia Elmore Costa and the World War II veteran who's bench pressing 100 pounds on his 100th birthday. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts right now. The owner of a horse ranch in Escondido is responding tonight to complaints about the condition of her animals. She says her horses are healthy. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carla Chiquetta. And I'm Kirsten Holmes in for Marcella Lee. Last night we showed you video of those horses in a Working For You report. Today, CBS 8's David Gofferson spoke with the owner to get the other side of that story. We have 15 horses that have been in sanctuary, unadoptable, on our property for almost 20 years. Deborah Loving is the owner of this one and a half acre ranch on Kawanaloa Drive in Escondido, where she keeps rescued horses. The horses are cared for, they're fed, they've had veterinarians check them out. Yesterday, CBS 8 aired a report where neighbors were concerned the animals were being neglected. We interviewed Audrey Reynolds, who posted photos online showing the horses standing in mud, their coats appeared unkept. The owner admits the horses may look dirty, but that does not mean they're neglected. They are unfortunately being exposed to a tremendous amount of rain and mud consequently because of our atmospheric rivers, which we're not accustomed to. The corrals are not dirty, they're muddy. The horses are groomed from the mud, they roll in it, they like it. Reynolds called out one mare in particular, calling the animal emaciated. She even filed a complaint with animal control. But the owner says the mare is a 30-year-old former thoroughbred that is well-fed. She is not a fat horse, but she's not emaciated. There's nothing wrong with her teeth. She eats six flakes of alfalfa a day and 10 pounds of grain and senior feed a day. And she is a happy, healthy horse. County Animal Services officers inspected all the horses over the weekend. The owner said one horse needed its hooves trimmed, and now some of the horses have been moved out of the mud. We had the veterinarian come out, look at all the horses, had no problem, didn't see anything wrong. Then I had my blacksmith come out on Monday and trim that one horse's feet, and the horse is fine. David Goffertson, CBS 8. Thanks, David. The owner says County Animal Services will be back at the ranch this coming Sunday to conduct a follow up inspection. One person was taken into custody after a gun scare at the Naval Medical Center San Diego this morning. That scare caused a lockdown at the hospital that lasted almost two hours. Staff and patients in part of the facility were told to shelter in place around 1030 after reports of a person with a gun. Military officers searched the complex and found no threat. San Diego police also say that the person who was detained for questioning was not armed. San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria has released his proposed fiscal budget for 2024. That budget is more than $5 billion. It's also $120 million more than the last fiscal year's budget. It focuses on infrastructure, homelessness, streets, and public safety. Mayor Gloria will present that budget to the city council for approval on April 24th. The man accused of stabbing and killing Cash App founder Bob Lee made his first court appearance in San Francisco today. Yeah, San Francisco police arrested 38-year-old Nemo Momini in Emeryville early yesterday morning. CBS 8's Jesse Pagan has been following this case for you, Jesse. With the first hearing today, we're learning new details about the night that Lee died. Yeah, according to CBS Bay Area, Momini was in court today in an orange jailhouse suit. Clothes. He flashed a heart-shaped sign gesture to family members and only spoke to agree to waive his right to a speedy trial. Though many sister was in court, which new documents show had some kind of connection to Lee. Paula is my sister, and she will. She actually, I entered a general appearance for her. 
A bit of chaos followed outside the courtroom as reporters asked Momeni's attorney's brother, Robert, Canny questions. Robert, also an attorney, appeared on his sister's behalf while she's on vacation. Uh, he had friends and family here in support. The facts as to what occurred or did not occur will come out uh, over time. Both he and a spokesperson for the San Francisco District Attorney's Office stayed tight-lipped about details in the case. The documents that will be available are the charging document and the record and the motion to detain, which will be contain all the information available in the motion to detain. The documents filed with the court show some kind of connection between Momeni's sister, who was in court today, and Bob Lee, but investigators wouldn't go into more detail. What we have at this point is, and what we've been willing to release to the public uh, is the fact that Mr. Momeni was, does have a sister with whom was connected to Mr. Lee um, and, and apparently is uh, what connects the two men. Um, but at this time, we're not revealing any more than what's contained in our detention motion. The documents go on to tell a narrative of Lee, Momeni's sister, and two others drinking in an apartment in the Mission District. Lee and the witness left to go to Lee's hotel room, where that witness told police Lee got a call from Momeni about his sister. Later that night, surveillance video shows Lee and Momeni leaving Lee's hotel together. Investigators say other video shows the car parked in the Rincon Hill neighborhood. A confrontation happens on the sidewalk. Lee stumbles up the street, and the car speeds off. Now, despite the appearance in court, the formal arraignment hasn't actually happened yet. According to Kenny, there was an agreement to continue it until the 25th of the month, adding even more mystery to the high-profile case. Kirsten? Thank you for that, Jesse. Okay, so in Northern California, a man accused of firing gunshots and making threats that evacuated the state capitol remains in jail. Police say Roseville, oh, police in Roseville say Jackson Penny will face charges that include attempted homicide and assault with a firearm. He's accused of going on a shooting spree on Wednesday night, shooting into the air and at buildings. Thankfully, no one was hurt. Police say Penny then made a threat against the state capitol on Thursday morning. Placer County Sheriff's deputies surrounded a mobile home park in Granite Bay yesterday afternoon when someone spotted his truck. All these marshals started coming up and opened up their doors and stood behind them with their guns drawn. And it's like, oh, wow. Oh, wow, indeed. The owner of the mobile home where Penny was found says the home is vacant and he has no connection to Penny. Tonight, there is a growing debate among Democrats on whether U.S. Senator Dianne Feinstein should resign. She's been away from Washington for more than a month now as she recovers from shingles. As our political reporter Morgan Reiner tells us, the impact of Feinstein's absence is being felt across the country. Senator Dianne Feinstein sits on a key committee that approves judicial appointments. Feinstein herself knows that this is a crucial role and has asked herself to be temporarily replaced on this committee, but that's easier said than done. In February, Senator Dianne Feinstein announced she would not seek re-election in 2024, but would fulfill her term. The next month, the 89-year-old senator was diagnosed with shingles and has not been in Washington, D.C. since. President Biden has been trying very hard to rebalance the federal judiciary after uh, the wave of appointments under Donald Trump. And he was doing pretty well up until, you know, a month or two ago. And now it's slowed down with certain judges. People want Dianne Feinstein back or they want her to resign. The senator has missed a majority of the votes taken this year. Senator Amy Klobuchar telling CNN if Feinstein can't come back, it'll be a national issue. With this close Senate, that's not just going to hurt California. It's going to be an issue for the country. The first to call for the senator's resignation, California Representative Ro Khanna. In an interview with The Hill, he said he's simply saying publicly what so many are saying privately. She's simply unable now to fulfill her duties. But Senator Nancy Pelosi says she's never seen anyone go after a male senator this way, suggesting sexism at play. But I don't agree with that. Senator Grassley, the Republican from uh, Iowa, is 89 years old, but he's there. The, the real question is not her age. The real question is, can she show up, vote on the Judiciary Committee, Feinstein herself asked this week to temporarily be replaced on the committee, but that she's planning on going back as soon as her doctors clear her for travel. Probably won't work because you would require unanimous consent of the Senate or at least 60 votes. And 
I think it would be very difficult to find 10 Republicans. So if Feinstein does decide to resign, it would be up to Governor Gavin Newsom to appoint her replacement. And in the past, he has said that if this opportunity were to arise, that he would appoint a black woman. Robert Schrum says that Representative Barbara Lee would be the most obvious choice, and she herself has already put in the hat in the ring, and now she's running to replace Feinstein in 2024. It's worth noting now that Representative Ro Khanna, the first representative to call for Feinstein's resignation, is the co-chair of Representative Barbara Lee's campaign. Well, it was a big day at MCAS Miramar. The Tomcats, one of the Marine Corps' most historic and decorated squadrons, have been reactivated with a bit of a modern makeover. The old AV-8B Harrier Squadron, which served in the Korean War, Vietnam, and Desert Storm, was deactivated back in 2020. The new generation is made up of F-35C strike fighter jets, the most lethal platform the Tomcats have ever flown. Still ahead, a local high school basketball star facing criminal charges tonight. Plus, we speak with a survivor of the Holocaust who's telling us more about his time at a concentration camp and why he's taking a trip back to Auschwitz. A lot of sunshine along the coast, gearing up for that sunset, which is going to be at 718 for tonight. We're going to see more of that sunshine by this weekend, a bump up in those temperatures. Just how warm? Details ahead. There's proposals to raise SDG E rates. I'm Abby Black. We verify our electric vehicles the reason we have to pay more for electricity. a rude heat pump water heater. They'll save up to 40% on their energy bill and helping them control their energy use and reducing our carbon footprint. Call Bill Howe for a more sustainable San Diego. Are you looking for new flooring? Then come to America's Finest Carpets Inventory Clearance Sale. Save on our coastal collection of waterproof flooring featuring a 25-year warranty, now only $199 a square foot. one 402 ASCC. How powerful is Cox Internet? Beginning simulation. So powerful that one day you'll be able to simulate a real game against some of the best basketball players in the world. From your driveway. Cox Internet. With multi-gig speeds coming soon, it's Internet built for tomorrow, today. This is Toyota Electrified, America's largest electrified lineup, including the RAV4 Prime Plug-In Hybrid, the Tundra iForce Max Hybrid, the all-new redesigned Prius, and the all-electric BZ4X. Enjoy these benefits, and now you can get a great lease on a new BZ4X, including Toyota Care. We make it easy. Toyota, let's go places. never seen a production any better than this anywhere. Breathtaking. It is absolutely stunning. I feel better about the world. I feel uplifted. Invigorating. It was encouraging. Gave me hope. This has just been therapy for the soul. It's a must see. Must see. Make sure you see it. Make sure you see it. Shen Yun, coming next week. San Diego Civic Theater. Get tickets today. ShenYun.com slash SD. They told mom her daughter had been kidnapped, but it was a scam. They had cloned the teen's voice. Next. In the Coachella Valley, Coachella Valley tonight, evacuation orders are lifted as crews watch for spot fires and flare-ups after a brush fire. That fire broke out about 9.30 last night and quickly grew to about 27 acres. A few nearby homes had to be evacuated, and one firefighter was taken to a hospital with minor injuries. By morning, the fire had stopped growing. The cause of the fire, though, is still under investigation. We are seeing more and more electric vehicles on our roads and freeways, and that's raising questions for some of you. Yeah, one of you wrote to us and asked if EVs are causing your SDG&E bill to go up. CBS 8's Abby Black went to the energy experts to verify. Rates for San Diego gas and electric customers are the most expensive in the country, and the utility company is asking to raise those rates, which is causing outrage among ratepayers. 
CBS 8 viewer David Dioma wrote us and asked, what's the cause for the increases in usage? I'm curious if electric car recharging is causing the increase in sdg &E usage and driving up rates. Let's verify. Are sdg &E rates going up because of the amount of electricity used to charge electric vehicles? Our sources are San Diego Gas and Electric's Senior Vice President of Customer Services and External Affairs, Scott Kreider, the Department of Energy, and Edward Lopez, the Executive Director for the Utility Consumers Action Network, known as UCAM. And fundamentally, the, the, the answer is no. Scott Kreider with sdg &E estimates the utility company is charging 100,000 electric vehicles in San Diego County which he says is the highest concentration in the state. The Department of Energy's latest numbers show in 2021 there were about 563,000 EVs registered in the state of California, the most in the country. Kreider says even with that many EVs charging on the grid, it's not driving up rates. Think of it as when you buy in bulk, you end up saving. The more electricity that we use, that really means that we're spreading out the costs of the infrastructure across more customers and more sales of electricity. So that can actually have a downward pressure on rates uh, over time. The Department of Energy says home heating and a water heater pulls more electricity than charging an electric vehicle. We also verified stg &E's time of use rates are cheaper during super off peak hours for EV owners than non EV owners. The rate doesn't necessarily change depending on how much you use. Edward Lopez with UCAN verifies SDG&E's answer. Rates are not going up because of the amount of energy it takes to charge an EV. Our ultimate answer is no, not really. Lopez cautions as SDG&E makes more investments in analytics, data and grid upgrades to accommodate the growing number of EVs. Those costs could be passed on to rate payers. The cost to transmit and deliver to all of those customers could go on. So we can verify, no, sdg &E rates are not going up because of the amount of electricity used to charge electric vehicles. With your Verify, I'm Abby Black, CBS 8. Thanks, Abby. Coming up Monday at 6, can airlines charge a fee to help you at the airport? We'll verify. Oh, everything is just getting more expensive. What they gonna help me do is if they're not gonna bring me some sunshine and some warmer weather, I, I don't know if I need them. Well, you're getting a sunshine tax at least this weekend. I'm here for it. <laughs> You'll see a little bit more cloud cover, Kirsten, by next week. But also talking about some temperatures that will be uh, going down. So we are talking about a warm up by the weekend, cooler temperatures by the start of next week. And if you want more sunshine and some heat, you gotta wait until about Friday of next week. That's when things really start to warm up around here. So take Taking a look at our current temperatures, you got 61 degrees for downtown, also 60 degrees right now for El Cajon. You got those 50s for Del Mar, and the same for Carlsbad, as well as the 40s across the mountains. We have wind speeds that are picking up to double digits right now for Boulevard, the same for Borrego Springs, but west of the mountains, it's either light or it's calm, so pretty quiet out there for this evening. Eight miles per hour, that's for downtown, seven miles per hour for Carlsbad, with a gust of nine miles per hour for La Mesa, also for Chula Vista at 11 miles per hour, and 11 miles per hour for Encinitas. So we have an area of low pressure. Now, well, it depends on where you are in the county for today. If you were closer towards the coast, you saw a lot of sunshine and you saw a lot of that starting in the uh, morning hours, late morning hours, then into the afternoon. But if you were inland, you were still dealing with some clouds that were lingering, some moments of sunshine, but then the clouds started to move in again. Now, here's the thing. We still have that area of low pressure that is exiting towards the east. And so that's why there was still some lingering cloud cover across inland areas, but more sunshine is in store for tomorrow with this area of high pressure. It's going to move in as that happens. We're going to warm up and that's going to be the case by this weekend. So temperatures mainly for inland areas are going above seasonal by five to 10 degrees because of that area of high pressure closer towards the coast. You're still going to have more of the marine influence that cooler air. So daytime highs are going to be pretty consistent. You'll see that coming up now when we talk about rain chances. So by next week we are actually going to be a little little bit cooler series of low pressure systems just sweeping by to the north of us. So that offers up a slight chance so we could see some shower activity that would be on 
Tuesday, even less of a chance by Wednesday, but overall mostly dry for the next eight days. By tomorrow, still with those 60s right along the coast when it does come to our temperatures, and then you're talking about some 70s across inland areas. 71 degrees for Ramona, the same for Valley Center when it comes to daytime highs for tomorrow, also in the 70s for El Cajon as well as for Alpine. Our surf forecast about one to three feet, and we will have those sets up to about four feet with a low risk of rip currents through tomorrow. So your eight day microclimate forecast shows those 70s sticking around at least to start off the week, and then you're noticing temperatures are coming down by next week across inland areas right back into those 60s before we get right back into some 80s. More details in your complete forecast next half hour. Let's go ahead and take a look at your weather quiz question for tonight. What factor or factors cause severe flooding? Yeah. <laughs> Is it A, heavy rain, B, raging rivers, C, light rain, or D, A and B? I can tell you it's not C. Some, some days I just think you're angry writing these quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just A glad that bit. you're making it open for everyone to be able to answer. I am like because I got around. criticized for making them really hard. They were hard, Carly. <laughs> you could see sitting around for like five minutes going, I need an idea, I need it. Okay, I'm just doing this. Pretty much. <laughs> just go to our website. CBS8.com slash weather quiz to make your guess. This month's prize is a one night weeknight getaway to Saquon Casino Resort. It includes a one night stay for two in their 12 story luxury hotel tower and a spa treatment featuring a Swedish relaxation massage. This prize is sponsored by Corky's Pest Control. You get your new weather quiz question every Monday through Friday during this newscast and our 7 a.m. So good luck. All right, so the Padres are teaming up with SDG and E to break barriers. The two groups held a forum at San Diego High School today with various speakers sharing their experiences about overcoming racial, gender, and other biases. My motivating um, drive is to make everyone believe that their uniqueness, that they're your one of one, and there's no reason why you don't belong in that room. You just, but if you don't believe it first, uh, other people around you won't believe it. The high school also unveiled the new mural of Johnny Ritchie, who broke the color barrier for the Pacific Coast League Padres in 1948. Each student in attendance, get this, received two free tickets to the Padres game against the Braves on Monday. Good oh, for them. They are going to have fun. Learned something and got something cool. That's a win-win. I appreciate it. Okay, so a local man in his 90s who spent time in a Nazi concentration camp as a teenager, he's sharing his story with us tonight. Coming up next, why he's returning to Auschwitz eight decades later.